know if you can hear me or not. There's a lot of mowing going on. Yeah, I wanted to do some more sort of vlogging a little bit. I just want to do something kind of cool. I don't really know what I'm going to say here. I don't have any of this scripted out. But I posted something earlier about how I wanted to try to you know, sort of change the way I'm doing things. Uh, I have a horrible problem, it seems, it appears, with uh, letting things go and getting things done. Uh, it's not that I'm lazy about it. It's that I got some sort of perfectionism thing going. It's a problem that didn't, it didn't happen, you know, overnight. This is like something that's, I think it started like 20 years ago, 20, 25 years ago. And it's just several causes of, you know, why it happened. I very much want to change that in myself. I guess one of the things, one of the things has been, you know, it's sort of like a perfectionism thing where I, I don't want to let, it's like one, one side of my glass is darker than, one lens is darker than the other. Because I easily get distracted, as you can probably tell. Okay, so, now, now you're not going to be able to hear me because the air conditioner is kicking in. Here's what I'm trying to say. Uh, I'm trying to start a new motto with myself and try to, you know, get a new belief system going where I'm saying it is better to get things done than for them to be perfect. I'm going to try to take the weight off my shoulders a bit of, you know, carrying this world, you know, where I say, okay, I'm going to do this, but, you know, I want to, I want it to be the best that can be. And maybe that is something... You know, that I sort of ingrained in myself, you know, and it's like, oh, I'm going to be the best I can be. I'm going to do this, you know. But when I was younger, and I mean, like, even in my, in my, you know, younger and then into my 20s, I, I didn't give a fuck what anyone thought. You know, I mean, I used to have this thing I would say where it's like water off a duck's back. I guess what I'm trying to say is I just need to give myself a little bit of a break. I kind of make things hard for myself. Yeah, I want everything to be just right, especially like, you know, on a movie, you know, I want everything to be just right. I'll edit something and it'll be really great. And then like, I mean, sometimes not even a day goes by. I just look at it later, look at the scene and it doesn't feel right. Now, I wonder, you know, if, if I were to let the project go and let someone else work with it and edit it, you know, would that be something that you know, would be better for me? That's still like putting out, you know, taking it out of my control and hoping that someone else will I don't know I don't think that'll work I think I'm really just going to try to to do it as I as I was saying to try to just get things done I remember one time I interviewed Billy Idol when I was at this radio station and he he, he was talking about one album I, I don't know if it was the first or second album but he was talking about that sometimes it would just be the first take of of him singing you know he's like oh that feels right and I'm not gonna you know let's just let it go at that boys and uh, I mean it doesn't sound like him at all just the idea of just I you know I guess it was probably like he didn't want to spend any money in the recording studio or, and I mean it's understandable because it, it gets expensive but he's just gonna you know just plow through these songs you know it's like he knew the songs he wrote the songs he was just gonna do them I, I, I want to be more like that the thing is is some of my films have been crowdfunded and and some of them you know I have producers on the producers have been super cool I can't get over how is it me is it am I looking at something it looks like one lens is darker than the other anyway uh, the, you know the producers have been really great and supportive and they've invested in me you know time and time again so you know I'm, I'm at the point now where I would like them to start uh, getting a return on their investment in me in, you know in any way they can so that they will you know want to you know continue so that I can continue making films you know, and I, I say films, you know, I, it could be anything. I could be talking about, you know, any kind of media, any kind of new stuff, or books. I would always just say cinema. It's like that book, you know, about Jean-Luc Godard, where the title of it is Everything is Cinema. So I say film sometimes when I mean story, or so that's just sort of a catch-all phrase for me. Since I've started thinking about done is better than perfect. Done is better than perfect. Since I've been saying that and sort of meditating on it it seems like this weight has lifted actually I had like a, sort of a severe backache 
I, I don't know, I had like a pinched nerve or something that seems to have alleviated the problem. So I think maybe that was a weight that I was carrying with me was this perfectionism thing. You know, it doesn't mean I want to crap something out or just put something out without any thought. I, I you know, I overthink things. So I would like to just just do the best I can, but then cut it off like at a deadline. Just say, okay, this is what I'm going to do for this amount of time. The thing is, you know, I was a lot of hemming and hawing, a lot of uh, uh, unhappiness, a lot of unhappiness about, well, I'm not really happy with the way the film's going. I'm not way the way the editing is going, and it's it doesn't look like a Stanley Kubrick film. This is like I have I have I have these these idols that are so. Um, you know, that are so far out of my reach. You know, David Fincher, David Lynch, all the Davids, um, Stanley Kubrick, and it's just like no way for one guy who's trying to do everything to compete with that, that kind of brilliance and genius and perfection. So I just need to cut myself loose a little bit and just find those elements that I really like in a film and try to do those, you know, and try to focus on finishing and getting it done. I, mean, I look kind of fat in this. I've lost a lot of weight. I don't know. I still look, no matter what, I think it's because my head is round and my head is bald and it just makes me look fat, but I, you know, I've lost like a hundred pounds. I just feel fat. See, I think the fat was all that weight of perfectionism that I was carrying around. So I guess what I was saying was I, I, I used, you know, I started about 25, maybe 20, 25 years ago where I started worrying about what people thought about me or worried about what I guess I was worried about criticism and and stuff like that and uh, it, it, it so it was like a fear and it is it, it absolutely sucks to live your life in fear you know not, not like physical fear like in war or something like that but just the idea that somebody is going to say something that is critical and hurts your feelings or they just say you know what I don't really like you I don't like what you do I don't like what you mean that kind of, you know, and it's like, oh, you know, so you want to sort of get out of that, you know, it's like, it's like, oh, I, I'd like to try to, you know, move away from that kind of, you know, feeling. But, it, but, but when I was younger, I used to, you know, I used to, didn't give a fuck what anyone thought about me or, or, you know, thought about what I did. I want to go back to that. So I know it's, it's like, I want to go back to that youthful vigor that I had where I really, I just did what I wanted and I was pretty successful at it. I, that, that, that particular time in my life, I was making fantastic money. I mean, I was making three, you know, I was making, well, I started to say I, ma I was making three figures, but I was making three figures before the comma. So it's like six figures. Anyway, so I want to do that again. And it's very important for me that the people that have supported me for me to be able to uh, support them, pay them back, get them a return so that they can go, oh, okay, you know what, I knew Jerry then, and yeah, he's cool, and you know, uh, you know, uh, I put some money in, I got some money back, I, you know, so that I could continue. Because the thing is, can you imagine like waking up every morning and going to a job that you absolutely love talking about, love doing, it would just be so amazing. Now the thing is, is I have that kind of job. I mean, I, I'm actually making a living creating. It's, I think it, it's, it's a great thing and, and I found that in my life. I can do something that I love and make a living at it. Because I think, you know, if you're not 100% happy, if you don't wake up and go, wow, man, I'm so excited today because I get to go make a film or oh, I'm writing something today. I'm communicating some sort of idea. I have some questions in my head and I'm gonna find the answer by writing uh, it out in a story. Yeah, so I've, I've, I'm at a point, you know, where I can wake up in the morning and be jazzed about something I'm gonna create and something I'm gonna make. The enemy, <laughs> uh, the problem with all of that was me. So I'm going to try to get out of my own way. I'm, I'm going to get out of my own way and try to solve my own problems because I feel like if you're not, if you don't wake up and you, you know, you're doing something and you're not 100% thrilled, like I have so many friends that go, oh my gosh, you have a great life. You got a great wife, you got a house, you got a car, you know, you got, well, you know, you got a riding lawnmower. I mean, that's great. I don't know if you can hear that. The police are coming. I talk too much, it's gone on too long. They're coming to get me and take me away. Oh, is that an ambulance? Oh, okay. I couldn't tell. I just now saw it go by. Hope everybody is okay. You know, so if you're not if you're not 100% you know happy with the way 
your day is going or your life is going or the work that you do. I, I think that you are probably not doing what you should be doing. And for some reason, I was embarrassed to actually be enjoying what I was embarrassed. It's like even when I was on the radio or I, I had a, I was doing the TV show, I was always like, oh, it's so much work and all this. You know, but but it was all an act, really. But I convinced myself that it was a chore. I used to be a better communicator, and I think what happened is I did I said a lot of stuff, you know, to myself that uh, you know hurt. I hurt my own self. You see, like if I could hurt myself before anyone else hurt me, or if I could insult myself, you know, like self-deprecating humor, if I could do that before anyone else did, then oh, you know, it was. I was, it, it was somehow, I, I twisted in my head to say, oh, that's okay, you know? Like, uh, I'll hurt myself before they get a chance to hurt me. And, uh, but, that's an illness that doesn't work, and uh, that leads to unhappiness and anger and depression. And so, I guess what I wanna say is, I found the thing that I want to do every single day for the rest of my life. It is exciting and uh, trying to explore and discover things, new feelings, new emotions, new experiences or you know that kind of stuff is uh, it's exciting. It's a challenge. You're challenged every day. It's like you're a toy maker and you got to figure out okay how will this toy make someone feel good you know to play and so that's essentially I feel like my making of films and videos are as if I were a toy maker. I don't know. I found myself the other day, I said something, I want to be a filmmaker. And I've been making films. I've been, I had a TV series in the 90s, and oh, I, actually, I had one in the 80s. You know, I always say I want, I want, I want. But I am. I'm not I want. I am. So I am a filmmaker. I am a storyteller. I'm a guy who's just trying to do his own thing that has found the thing he wants to, I get up four o'clock every morning because I'm excited, I, but I don't go to, I mean, I'll, I probably don't go to sleep until like 12 or 12.30, so I'm not, I know I'm not getting enough hours, but but I'm, I wake up, I'm so excited. And what excites me is the emails and the messages and the comments and the likes. And I, I really want to build a group of friends and supporters and I have an opportunity. Because I used to have a huge audience in radio. Even on my podcast, I had millions of, you know, millions of people. You know, I'd like to get that again. Not, you know, not to any way sort of make money off of everybody. Be able to say, hey, check this out. I did this. How do you feel about it? You know, not that I would care what anyone thought. I, I'm trying to get away from that. But maybe, you know, there might be ideas. You know, someone might go, oh, you know what? That story sounds like something my one of my family members did. And this is what happened. You know, and just sort of branch off into something else that might, you know, spark more creativity. I don't know, I feel like I'm horrible at communicating. I used to be so good. I didn't used to go, um, or, uh, you know, or I don't know. But it's it's all come back. So I gotta, I gotta break, gotta break from that. I think I'm really hard on myself. <sighs> yes, I am very hard on myself. And I don't, I don't, I am giving myself a break. I'm, you know, I'm getting out of my own way. I'm taking a break by getting out of my own way and letting things happen. Hopefully I'll be a better person to be around and I'll be a better person for you to, like if you comment, I'll say something back. If you follow me, I'll follow you back. If you comment, I'll comment. I think I already said that, I'm not sure. But, you know, that's what, uh, I think I hear a deer walking up behind me. Is it, we have deer here and they stomp around. Or it's some hunter. Could be zombies. This is where we film the zombie battle. Done is better than perfect. If you're not doing something that you feel 100% jazzed about, you're doing something wrong. I have a hard time saying this one, but it's like, you know, don't give a fuck what anyone thinks, just do your thing. I think I am my audience. You know, I say, like, okay, well, I'll just make, I'll just do stuff to make myself happy. You know, hopefully there's other people like me that will get on the journey, you know, go for the ride with me. But anyway, that's, you know, I, I'm overthinking. I'm, I'm talking way too much. And uh, I just wanted to tell you that uh, I, uh, if you've been sticking around and supporting me emotionally, financially, or whatever, I just want to say thank you. It means a lot to me. And uh, it's great having you 
as a friend. I hope something I say sparks something in you. Try to be creative yourself or do something you know, for yourself or your family. I'm going to do these more often, you know, like the podcast used to be. So I'll get better at communicating. And you'll, you'll go, oh, he's talking directly to me, like warts and all. I just say it like it is. There is a deer out there. I don't know if you can hear it. I think we, you know, we also got ticks out here. So we, I think, and we, there was a tick. I, I, I haven't had a tick like bit into me for a long time, but I found one walking on me a couple of weeks ago. And Jessica, my wife, knows about like Lyme disease and you know what those ticks look like. And it was one of those Lyme disease ticks. And thank God it, it was just crawling on me and not. But anyway, you know, the sweet little baby deer, you know, they must be covered in ticks. Okay, that's it. I'm out of here. There's a little bit of, you know, nature for you. So, uh, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll probably hopefully do this more, maybe like every day. So, stick with me, subscribe, share. <sighs> I wish I were more attractive so that you would follow more. I uh, wish I had like a flowing mane of hair, but it would be a mess because, you know, it's like I don't really care about personal hygiene. <laughs> I don't want to say that. <laughs> but anyway, so have a great day and hopefully uh, hopefully you'll see me tomorrow.